And these are cultivars or specific selected varieties of chrysanthemum morifolium. These have been selected out and kept growing in particular parts of China for hundreds, if not longer, hundreds of years, if not longer. And they've been perpetuated that way because they have particular useful effects, different than the cultivated ornamental chrysanthemums that you typically see. Um, this plant, as you can see, is got no problem growing. Um, it's quite vigorous. It grows very strongly. It basically is a clumper, but sometimes where the stems attach, it can attach roots there, and it also will run occasionally as well. So it's not that hard to keep control of it, but if you've got a bunch of plants around it, it is going to start to bully them and kind of grow into those other plants. So you want to be careful about that if you're going to plant them too close to anything else. What kind of a soil do they like? Average, average. Sandy, probably good. Sandy is probably good. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, this is a clay soil and it grows fine here. No, much water. Normal water. Normal water, average water. The and sun, sun, yeah, yeah. And full sun, it prefers full sun. And propagation wise, I mean, you can take these little runners that do form from the plant and, and propagate it that way. Also, it's very easy to grow cuttings from this. You just, any time of the year? Well, um, probably the best time is to, to do it in the, you could do it in the, the <coughs> late fall or, or, or early spring, that kind of period of time, I would say. Um, it that doesn't take much to grow these. You can even stick the stems in water and they'll root and then you can plant those. So it's very easy to propagate. You use the leaves. They use the flowers. Flowers. Yeah. Right. Although the leaves do have some properties in them too, the same properties, but you're using the flowers primarily. And you're just drying the flowers. Is um, the flowers? What's that? Are this no. the flowers? No, that's a different herb. That's the motherwort, Chinese motherwort. The, the flowers will be here probably in uh, September, October, maybe even November. The, the, in their fall they come. Like your other chrysanthemums typically that you grow in your yeah. garden, they'll exactly. usually be a fall flowering plant. So, And uh, <clears throat> so this one is an herb that's used for clearing heat. It's, it's a relief the surface <coughs> herb they call it in Chinese medicine. So it's used for colds and flus typically. Um, but it can be used more often for when there's heat patterns where like you might have a fever, a headache, something like that. Uh, and there'd be um, more fever than chills, somebody feeling more hot than cold. Um, and it's used also for helping with the eyes. It's very good for brightening the eyes, the Chinese say, clearing the eyes, uh, when there's wind, what we call wind heat in the liver. And it can be used for helping when there's blurriness of vision, when there's red eyes, itchy eyes, dry eyes. It's great for when there's yin deficiency also of the kidneys and liver to help with the eye problems that might be also a uh, result. And uh, it's used for what we call yang rising with the liver and wind symptoms. So there might be headaches, like especially on the temples or parietally along the sides of the head and uh, dizziness and uh, again, maybe eye problems, things like that. Glaucoma will help. It might. It could. It could possibly be and useful. And when you see little dots, they, they oh, you talking about the floaters? Yeah, you see. Um, that that can help, but that's more of a blood deficiency problem. And so generally, you'll use herbs to help drain the blood for that. We'll talk about an herb in a in a few minutes that'll be good for that. <clears throat> so uh, it also is used a little bit for uh, toxins like sores, carbuncle ulcers. It can be useful for, for that kind of thing, toxic sores. What's that? 